don't leave, close the door. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a wonderful crowd here, and I want to introduce you to the marquee attraction of the Winter Outdoor Wildlife Expo. This is it. See that? I told you. So while we're, you're here, the marquee attraction, you're going to be entertained. You're ready to be entertained. And while being entertained, you will be entertained. On these birds, these wonderful birds are called birds of prey. In the bird books, they're referred to as raptor. Raptor derivative comes from Latin and means grasp. They've got very powerful talons. The other thing they're possessed with is they have the senses that almost beyond our human comprehension, which you will learn in the show. These birds are also highly protected by law. You cannot harm them uh, in any way or harass them in any way. They're too important to our ecosystem and our planet. And now, uh, I'm going to tell you one more thing about these birds here, is that they are, you cannot own them at all times. You must be accredited and licensed to have all this, which is obviously the case here. Uh, I have an important message, which I must read here. Uh, I just got word that uh, Prince uh, Harry and Meghan were supposed to come to the show, but I don't think they're going to make it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when they do come, they can still let them in. Uh, they got about three minutes to come. The other thing I want to report here, and this is very important, um, from time to time during the show, some of these birds of prey, P-R-E-Y, when they go after prey, their prey starts with P-R-E-Y, <laughs> they come back and be pathetic. So when they are flying around the room here, and you're looking up, uh, uh, one thing I want you to remember, keep your mouth closed. <laughs> and now it is not only my pleasure, but my honor to introduce to you Jonathan and Susan Wood and the Raptor Project. All right, hey, how you Great to be here. I'm here with my wife Susan, and uh, we're here from New York. I don't feel excited about that. <laughs> anyway, I should mention my wife's birthday, which was actually two days ago, but I, I celebrated for like a month, don't I, Susan? <laughs> and uh, I'm taking her out to dinner tonight. She's, she's laughing because she goes out to dinner like every night. <laughs> so it's a night home that she looks forward to, so that, that's nothing new. I forgot what we're having tonight, Susan, but whatever you want. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to meet some really cool birds. Uh, we first came down to Texas about 17 years ago to South Padre Island, and uh, that's when I first heard the word intertexas. It was a term I never heard of. Up in New York, we don't talk about intertexas, we talk about snowbirds. Okay? <laughs> they head down to Florida for the winter because that's an easy drive. Uh, but we never heard about Winter Texas, and we started to meet some Winter Texas, of course. We thought you guys were kind of weird, but we wanted to become like you. And so my wife and I became Winter Texans uh, probably about 14 years ago. We bought a home not on South Padre Island, but on North Padre Island. We call that area the Redneck Riviera, and, and we love it up there. After a few years, I said, why don't we just become Texas residents? They don't pay state income taxes, okay? And so uh, my accountant said, oh, okay, why don't you try that out? When he got our first tax return, he said, you made a really, really good choice here. <laughs> and so we've been taxing. We actually still have a home in New York along with an incredibly high tax burden that goes with it. But we are Texan and we, and we, and we actually love you guys. I mean, we love you all down here in Texas, all right? I'm from New York, so I talk a little bit, bit funny. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. He's got no one I'm talking about here. Forget about it. You know what I'm saying? What's up with that? What are we talking about here? <laughs> anyway, so I bought some birds. I've got quite a few raptors. I had the largest traveling collection of birds of prey in the world for many years. We had about 55 birds this summer. <laughs> I only bought 15 of them here. Is that enough for you guys? Okay. We're getting kind of cramped in here. Last year I was up against the wall. We have about 100 and something seats in here. We've got to cut it down to 93 seats because we have those tanks back there. We can't move them, right? <laughs> you saw the tanks, right? The one on the left with the alligators and the one right behind this lady with the snakes in it. <laughs> we had a problem. <laughs> we found out that tank wasn't high enough. We lost a couple snakes yesterday, okay? 
they escaped somewhere, but the guy that does the snake show said it was fine because he could do a perfectly good show with the snakes that he's got left in there. But I'm just kidding you guys, there's alligators in both of those. Don't stick your fingers in there, all right? Listen guys, people always ask me the same question every day, and that is, where do you get these birds? Well, every morning, I go on eBay with the deal. I've never seen any birds when they're... <laughs> our birds are very special. Most of our birds are gifts. They've been given to us. Many of them are handicapped birds. They've gotten into trouble out there. Let me tell you, raptors, they get into trouble. Um, all kinds of crazy things happen to birds. Birds get hit by cars. They get hit by airplanes. They crash into windows, fences, wires, and buildings. They get shot, poisoned, electrocuted. And of course, one of the new obstacles out there for birds all over the country are gigantic windmills. It looks like they're going very slow, but the propellers are going over 100 miles an hour. And uh, it's kind of hard to fly past one of those things. What we try to do is we try to help birds out, fix them up, and release them back into their habitats as wildlife rehabilitators. But occasionally, we get a bird in with a permanent handicap. It ain't going to make it out there. Bird might have an injury to the wing, the leg, the eye, sometimes even the brain. And that prevents the bird from making a living out in the wild. So if we get a bird like that, what do we do with it? We keep it. We also give the bird a job. We hire the handicap. You guys get the picture here? <laughs> These guys do most of the work. They become wonderful teachers to teach people like you about their amazing lives. So this, whole, this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to learn a lot about birds from the birds. These are your teachers right behind me. You students better behave. I got some mean looking teachers coming out. Not all of them are handicapped. Some of them fly. We might turn a few of them loose in here. <laughs> some of you may need intensive therapy after the show. <laughs> We're going to meet our first guest. This beautiful bird I've got sitting right here is the largest species of falcon on planet Earth. The bird comes from a place that's a lot cooler than South Texas. A country so cold they named it Iceland. Imagine naming a country Iceland. Who came up with that idea? <laughs> Certainly not the Chamber of Commerce. But anyway, she's from a a really cold place. I'm sure you people are from cold states. They're cold now. I know any of your states are great in the summer. So who comes from a cold state here? Everybody. Where you come from? Wyoming. Wyoming. I'm going to be there this summer. Sundance, Wyoming. You ever get that? That's a, what, what part of Wyoming? Central. Central Wyoming. Okay, we love your state. We'll be there this summer. Any other cold states? Yes. Uh, Vermont? Yes. You say Vermont? You're the first Vermonter I've met down here. How did they, how'd you find out about this place? You ever hear of Florida? <laughs> <laughs> we love Vermont, okay? And you're from? Minnesota. Minnesota, okay? Believe it or not, last winter I was in Duluth. In the of Duluth. I just missed the historic cold snap that you had for probably two days. Otherwise, I would have died. <laughs> anyway, it was a little chilly up there. But I love Duluth. I went to the Duluth Trading Post. <laughs> Is it Duluth Trading Company? That's what it's called. Okay. It's funny because Duluth Trading Company, they got a store right in Duluth, of course, but they have a bigger one in Texas. Bigger than the one in Duluth. Did you know that? You know? On your way out past Dallas, you'll see that. Anyway, guys, so she comes from uh, Iceland, and I don't just use her for shows. I use her for something special. I use her for hunting in the ancient sport of falconry. I'm a master falconer. As you know, some people hunt with a gun, some people hunt with a bow and arrow. I hunt with a bird in a sport that's 4,000 years old. What do I hunt, you ask? Ducks. Don't tell those ducks in the backyard that. <laughs> I hunt ducks with falcons. I got a hunt falcon better than duck, duck dynasty. <laughs> but I spell it differently. It's duck die nasty. Because I'll tell you what, when this bird hits a duck in midair at over 200 miles an hour, the duck ain't going to hold up too well. This is the fastest animal on planet Earth. This is the fastest killer on planet Earth. Now, a couple things about raptors. In the world of raptors, it's kind of easy to tell the sexes between male and female, okay? Because the females are much larger than the males, and all of the birds are threat. So this is my female, and this is her brother right there, okay? Much smaller. Uh, he's about one-third smaller, so we call the males Tearsels from the word tertiary in the winter. And so they're tearsels. He also looks a little bit different because he's got sort of tan feathers. That's his immature plumage. Next year, he's going to look just like you, okay? As white as the driven snow. But uh, we breed deer falcons. We got a bunch of them up in, uh, in New York. 
And I love technology, don't you? All the different apps and stuff. I have the Falcon app. Do you guys have the Falcon app? It's a great app. The equipment that goes with it is very expensive. That's our GPS equipment. But um, I have cameras on a lot of my facilities right now, and I'm, I think I'll just check in with New York and, and see what's going on up there. I have so many apps, I can't even find the one. But uh, I'm going to my New York facility in the beautiful Casco Mountains in New York, where it's kind of snowy up there. And let's see what the Geofalcons are up to. So this is my Geofalcon pen here, and I'll just press a live feed. And uh, we'll see if it's snowing up there. I think it was snowing yesterday. That was taken in November. So we'll go to a live feed and see if there's snow on the ground. And there's snow on the ground. There's still a little bit of snow. See my beautiful Geofalcon sitting in there? Okay, 2,020 uh, miles away. That's her parents, and then I've got a, her big grandmother sitting right here. Can you hear the cold wind? How'd you like to be there? <laughs> Let me see if they want to talk to me. I talk to the animals. Did you guys know that? And uh, Dr. Dula. Matter of fact, the Philadelphia Inquirer, they did a review of my show years ago, and they said, Mr. Wood is a combination of Dr. Doolittle, Jay Leno, and Billy Graham. How do you like that combination? <laughs> so I do mix politics and religion in there sometimes, but. Um, we're going to see if these guys can hear me. They love my voice and they react to it on the Embaddy. Let's see if I can get it back on. on okay, I've got to turn this down. Okay, eagles, hawks, most of them have like, uh, and some of these owls, pretty much all of them, have uh, rounded wings. But falcons have sharp, pointed wings that are very sleek. They're very streamlined. They're kind of like the sports car of the air. Now, she can't do 200 miles an hour in here. She'd be bouncing off the walls, but maybe I can get you up to about five miles an hour. <laughs> Not a great place to fly. Uh, an arctic deer falcon, but at least you can see what her, her wingspan looks like. It's about three feet wide, and uh, she can really hit some really high speeds uh, up in the wild blue yonder. So that's my Arctic Jeerfalcon Tundra. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, one last bit of trivia for you here today. This bird happens to be the national bird of what country? Iceland, of course. I'm glad you guys are paying attention to me. So, um, not all countries have a national bird, but I think we do. And you people here have the rare privilege this afternoon of meeting the most famous bald eagle in the world. If you don't believe me, Google him. His name is Uncle Sam. He's been with the company for 25 years. I should give him some kind of an award this year, so it's like a gold watch or something. Like that. Anyway, I want to give you guys some great news about bald eagles. How are they doing? Great. And that's, that wasn't always the case. That bird was an endangered species for four decades, 40 years, mainly because of something called DDT, dichloride, 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 I think. I was saying that real fast. Now, um, we banned DDT, that was back in 1971. And at that point, we had only about 650 nesting pairs of bald eagles here in this country. But we now have, that's in your seatbelts, we have over uh, 17,000 Nesting pairs. Great news for the comeback hit. So bald eagles are, boy, they're all over the place now. Where do you find them? Near water. Their favorite food is fish. But they do eat all kinds of other animals. They eat rabbits, rats, squirrels, snakes, mice, chipmunks, prairie dogs, woodchucks, groundhogs, ducks, geese, seagulls, the occasional house cat. But actually, their favorite food is found right here in Texas. Those little, uh, 
What you want to talk? I'm telling you, they love Mexican food. They went to a cold eagle and said, you're having a burrito downtown. And sometimes they get lazy, and instead of catching a live animal, they'll eat a dead animal, like a roadkill. This bird was eating a roadkill. He was on a Virginia highway about 25 years ago. He got hit by a car. His left wing was severely damaged in the accident. You can see he's missing a big chunk of his left wing tip. He can't fly anymore, but for 25 years he's been my sidekick. He travels all of the USA with me, border to border, coast to coast, 45 states so far. 15,000 programs, I'm telling you. I'm proud of him. He's a true professional. Very well behaved. He's, uh, he's very conservative. You can tell he's a, uh, a right winger just by looking at him here. <laughs> we're going to give him a little bit of uh, lunch right now. We're going to feed him. All I need is a volunteer from the audience. Oh, yeah. Don't all jump at once. And I only pick female volunteers, just so I know. How are you, my dear? You're from where? Poteet. You did the Poteet Strawberry Festival for many years. Well, they haven't, you know, there's a woman, Nita, She's, she retired, so I don't get phone calls from them anymore. But we thought that's a huge festival. That's the best kept secret in Texas. I think it's the biggest festival in Texas. Just about. The town is small, but the festival is massive. Poteet Strawberry Festival. If you go there, she'll guide you to the strawberry passion. <laughs> I'm promoting you. Hang on, God. Your name is? Pam. Pam? Nice to meet you. Pam, Uncle Sam looks like he's dying to meet you. He's been a Poteet many times, okay? Uh, but I got to get, get you a little prepared for this because that bird's got a razor sharp beak and needle sharp claws. You'll notice, Pam, I use a lot of protective equipment working with my birds. Um, would you like your own protective glove? Would you do the protection? And the funny thing about the protein strawberry festival is you guys run out of strawberries, you know? And they bring them in from. <laughs> I think they're bringing them from Florida. No, I'm kidding. I don't know where they come from. Now, put your right hand in there. And Pam, follow me into the Raptor Zone. Glad to have you here from Poteet, Texas. Okay. Now, where's the food? I got a piece of fajita meat hiding here. Right back here, Pam. Don't worry, it's not brain surgery. We can do it just like that. Hold this by the very end of your fingers. Make sure your fingers don't stick out. Now, you see that sharp yellow beak? That's the danger zone. You and I are going in. Closer and closer. Closer, 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 closer. Pam, turn around, you're a big rock star here. Give me that thumbs up. Let me give you a present, Pam, to take that to Poteet, Texas. I travel a lot to USA, sponsored by... Nikon, of course, I get big bucks for a little logo, thing like that. And uh, I travel all over the country uh, for Nikon. Uh, I also have a Nikon camera, I take great pictures. And so I've got prints and posters here that you can buy after the show. But Pam, I think I'll give you one for free, and I hope you're proud to be an American today. Give her one more hand, guys. Okay. So, my dear friends, right now we're going to take everybody here on a cross-country trip all across the USA. By the way, I did a glove count before the end of the show, so let me make sure I got the I got falconers here. <laughs> you know who stole the glove from me? Robert F. Kennedy Jr. That bum, he's a friend of mine and stuff, but he, he borrowed a glove for a picture and I'm like, where's the glove? He took off. <laughs> I'll get that to you, Matt. <laughs> anyway, um, but at least it was a Kennedy, what can I say? So anyway, guys, uh, I want to take everybody here right now. We're going to go on a little uh, cross-country tour of the USA. Does that sound good? Our first stop? Texas, how do you like that? Now, I don't know if you guys realize this, Texas happens to be the number one state for birds. Did you guys know that? There's more species of birds in Texas than any state in the USA. Most of them are grackles. Anyway, but Texas, Texas is number one in birds. Texas is also number one in burritos. That's why this is a paradise for someone like me. I love Mexican food. I want to show you a bird that you can find right outside the door. Very common here in South Texas, but an exotic and very handsome bird nonetheless. People come from other countries to see this particular species. You guys get to see one in this room. It's a bird called the Crested Caracara. This is a Crested Caracara. 
Camara. You see the crest on the top of the head? Looks like a cheap toupee. <laughs> Those are actually feathers. Now, let me tell you, down here in Texas, this bird goes by another name. In Texas, they call this bird a Mexican eagle. This is a Mexican eagle. What's up? I call him Rio. This is a bird from the Rio Grande Valley region. Rio, can you do a little flying in here? Okay. A couple flying demonstrations might be good. I know there's not a lot of room in here, Rio, and I know you actually don't like to fly. He likes to walk. This bird prefers walking to flying. Figure that one out. I'll tell you why. He's a scavenger. Scavengers like to scavenge. He's always looking for these little pieces of red meat on the ground. He loves red meat. He also likes ladies with red painted toenails. <laughs> We got a problem here, so you didn't, you didn't get the memo, huh? I'm running out of food, but I have band-aids if we have to use them. <laughs> anyway, that's our crested cara cara. <laughs> what a cara character, what can I say? Crested, you're in big trouble, lady, okay? You too. <laughs> those are, guys, you gotta realize, those are like M&Ms to a bird. Like this. <laughs> that's our cara cara. Now, I was gonna freak you guys out, because I don't have one cara cara, I've actually got two. I thought there was going to be enough room for them, so I only brought one. But I have two caracaras. We you call two caracaras? How about a pair of caracaras? A pair of caracaras. <laughs> All right, we're going to stick you back there. You've done enough damage. <laughs> I love these guys. They're awesome. And let me tell you about Texas, in case you don't know. It's kind of hot down here most of the time. We have a lot of roadkill. We want to get rid of the roadkill ASAP as soon as possible. Guess who does the job? my friend right over here, part of the waste management team. I want to show you the other member of the waste management team. Back here, I got a bird named BB. BB stands for, I got a black vulture. This bird's extremely popular with the goth crowd. What's up, BB? You want to come out and meet some winter Texans? They come from all over the place, down here, because they know this is a paradise in the winter. But ladies and gentlemen, I love BB. BB is one of my all-time fa favorite birds. BB, can I ask you a stupid question? How come every time I do a show, you're checking my pockets? There's nothing in there. <clears throat> you know, the bird actually prefers uh, ladies. Any of you ladies here want to have a little vulture encounter? You can tell I'm not in New York, Susan. In New York, women go nuts over this bird. Are you kidding me? I got a woman down here. Come on up, okay? And if you're right next to that fish tank. There is one piranha in there, so make sure you don't stick your finger in that thing. Over here, my dear. Okay. I got a vulture. All I need you to do is um, <laughs> just lie down and play dead for a couple minutes. <laughs> I'm kidding. You. Where are you from? I'm from Iowa. Iowa. What town? Never heard of Boone. I've been all over the state. What are you guys hiding from us? Population of 37? Or? Yeah, <laughs> I've been all over Iowa. I'm going to tell you something about Iowa. No offense to you Iowans here, but you have the Hawkeyes, right? Yeah. Okay. The logo? You could have the Hawkeye. That ain't a hawk. The Falcon. Yeah. Okay. Let you get away with that. Okay. It's a nice logo. I'm not going to say. I say that and people get when I'm in your state. They want to throw me right out, okay? So, my dear, um, take your hand and make a circle with it like this and bring it up to the bird and let's see what's going to happen to you. <laughs> this bird will not do a thing to you. This bird will not hurt you because you're not dead yet. This is a great thing. <laughs> this bird can tell that you're not dead. This bird can smell that you're not dead. They have a great sense of smell. I don't know if you guys know that. When you see vultures up in the sky, guess what? They're not looking for food there. Up there with the air currents. Right now, we could have a vulture a thousand feet over this building, up in the clouds. There's nothing to eat. But over in Port Isabel, the other side of the bridge, five miles away, sitting on the side of the road in the hot sun, is a roadkill. It's been there for a few days, and now it's perfect. They love maggots, they're sort of like a side dish. Well, kind of like having grits for breakfast. Do you all, you all eat grits for breakfast in Iowa? She's from Iowa. This is a, I'm ashamed of you. You've never had, okay, I want you to try grits. Make sure they're not moving. That's very important. Okay. This is amazing. I meet a lot of people that never even tried grits. A little grits, a little butter. A little bit of a little butter. Not too much butter. You know, you've got to watch it. And uh, a little bit of salt. 
And some people, my mom used to put sugar on them. You guys ever heard that? That's how, that's how you make kids eat anything, just throw sugar on there. Okay? Didn't work with the spinach, though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thanks for coming by. You can go back to your piranha tank and make sure you don't stick. Anyway, that's our, our black culture, BB. Okay? We love BB. Let me get you over here. BB. Okay. Phew. By the way, down here in Texas, I think you got the, the black vulture and another bird with a red head. It's called the turkey vulture. Did you say turkey breast? <laughs> turkey. There's a black vulture. You know, up in New York, we have the black vulture. We got the turkey vulture. On Wall Street, we have the vulture capitalists. You ever hear that? <laughs> Dangerous. Anyway, guys, you also got a lot of hawks kicking around the great state of Texas. I hope you're taking notes. You got the red tail hawk, red shoulder hawk, broad wing hawk, Cooper's hawk, Schweitzer's hawk, Gossel, Cooper's hawk, Sharp Jig hawk. You got a bird book called the marsh hawk or harrier hawk. But um, I want to show you a local bird, and this is not a hawk you're going to find um, right here uh, on the island, but if you go over the bridge and head towards Laguna at Viscosa and into South Texas, into the valley, that's the domain of a bird called the Harris hawk. I happen to have a Harris hawk warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> and uh, this bird's name is Phoenix. Phoenix, are you still awake? You still on the job here? got people dying to meet you, okay? But you come out and say hi, okay? That's my buddy, Phoenix. And uh, these guys, what I really love about them is they can take a lot of heat. You're looking at a bird that can actually sit on top of a saguaro cactus way out in the Arizona sunshine when it's 115 degrees and be perfectly comfortable in a situation like that. They're very handsome. Notice the, the chestnut shoulders on our friend. Some people call this bird the bait. There's not a lot of perches in here. Okay? We, go up there. we had a problem day one because there was a woman sitting right underneath the tail. Okay? See the tail? See that white rump patch? It's nice to look at, but don't like you know look at it too long, especially this young girl right here. Big trouble. You pick that seat? Not a good idea. <laughs> I'm just kidding, a Harris Hawk's, uh, <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's our Harris Hawk. Um, they're Southwest Desert birds. I'll tell you what, they can take tremendous heat. And uh, I know we have tremendous heat and humidity down here in Texas, but uh, that's part of the course for uh, the Harris Hawk. This is a male Harris Hawk, by the way. How do I know that? By the size, females much, much larger than the males in, uh, in all of the birds of prey. And of course, that's how we tell the difference between the sexes, okay? <laughs> Not easy to maneuver in this room. I know, Phoenix, what can I say? Okay, but uh, <laughs> nice to have you stop by, my friend, okay? So give him a hand, he's great. <laughs> I really like hawks, I like eagles and caracaras and vultures, but my heart is with falcons, they're my favorite raptors. I want to show you a really cool falcon. I want to show you, ladies and gentlemen, a raptor. A raptor. He's destroying the entire building. Okay. He's, he's got, how did he get to the, he already knocked two of them over, now he's on number three. No, 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 he doesn't have to be out. We gotta just take these off next time, okay? Uh, but, <laughs> I don't know why he, maybe the Harris dog got. Anyway, guys, I want to show you a, a real cool bird. Uh, a bird called the Aplo Motto Falcon. Now, this is a bird that disappeared from the USA back in 1951. They vanished, they were gone, they were extirpated, and guess what? Now they're back. Uh, they're, they're only found in, uh, in one state, which happens to be Texas. So, again, if you go over the bridge, the Luna at the Scosa, is a place where they nest. I happen to want, have one here for your viewing pleasure. His name is... So, we're going to meet Zorro. Hey, uh, Vulture, what are you trying to tell me back there? Okay? You probably saw me that I got, you saw that I got food in my hand, so. You know that. Okay. You're trying to tell me you're hungry? I'm going to take this off of here because this is bothering me. <laughs> and now, everything is A okay. Zorro over here. <laughs> we're going to destroy this room before. Okay, yeah, let's okay. The best snake gets on the other. Um, <laughs> you guys know Chris Howard, don't you? The director of the, uh, she put this crazy show together here, and she's filling the, uh, the marshes outside with alligators and all kinds of dangerous stuff. So if anything goes wrong, blame that woman over there. Okay? Thank you. Okay. 
Chris does a great job. Give her a hand, by the way. Well, thank you, Chris. Maybe she'll have us back next year if we don't destroy too much. <laughs> this is my buddy. Isn't he cool? Apple Falcon. And uh, they're really cool. And actually, he's one of my hunting buddies. I don't hunt ducks with him. I hunt doves with him. He can catch a dove. <laughs> but you know what he prefers for breakfast? Grackles. He loves grackles. He eats it for breakfast. They go snack, grackle, pot. <laughs> anyway, that's my beautiful Aplo Motto Falcon. You'll notice something interesting about our friend here. He's got a beautiful set of dark stripes under his eyes. Those are called Malar, M A L A R. Malar stripes. Those are there to reduce the glare from the sun. And you see baseball players and football players doing that with makeup. They learned that from. The Falcons, not the Atlanta Falcons. The real Falcons. You'll also see a, a Maller stripe. Only Falcons have them. You'll see it on the uh, uh, the uh, the logo that you have in Iowa. You know, the Hawkeyes. <laughs> That's how you tell it's a Falcon. Anyway, he's a cool bird, uh, and keep your eyes open. I saw one coming down here a couple days ago, right on the side of the Laguna at the strip, and uh, that was kind of cool. So, right now. We're going to meet some birds that women love. You ready for this, guys? What's a way to a woman's heart? Owls. Women, for some, I don't know what it is, but they love owls. And I'm going to tell you who they are. Really. i got a whole bunch of owls to show you. I'm going to start way over on the left uh, with this bird sitting inside of a hollow tree called the barred owl. Barred owl. I went to Massachusetts a couple of months ago and they were calling them bad owls. This is a barred owl, not a bad owl. It's barred owl. Um, they're not down here really on the island. They're, they're, they're in Texas, but not in this particular neck of the woods. They're all over the country, by the way. And uh, that is a real barn owl. The only thing phony up there is the hollow tree stump made out of cardboard and the plastic leaves. That is a real owl. Don't stick your finger in there. After the show, I guess what's going to happen. Okay, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so we have a barred owl. We also have an owl called uh, a barn owl. Okay. And we have a barn owl here uh, named Soren. What's up, Soren? You re Soren's raring to go here, Susan. <laughs> Big time, you know what I'm saying? Barn owls live in uh, barns. They live in hollow trees. They live in palm trees, which they have down here in Texas. That's where they live. And this is Soren. A very beautiful bird that looks kind of like a perfectly toasted marshmallow. You look like a perfectly toasted marshmallow. Uh, I want to tell you guys uh, something about owls you might not know. They can see in the dark. You guys probably knew that. But did you know they have great hearing as well? Uh, right now you're hearing me with a piece of skin called an ear on the side of your head. This owl is using its entire face to pick up sound waves. All owls have something called a facial disc. It's a concave face designed to pick up sound. It works really, really well. And they also have ears that are different than ours. Our ears are symmetrical on either side of our head. They have one that's a little bit lower. Their ears are asymmetrical. Why is that? Well, it's a great design because all the bird has to do is move its head, turn its head, or bob its head, and it can get different perspectives. It can triangulate on exactly where a sound is coming from. They locate their prey with their eyes and with their ears. So let's do an experiment, okay? I want you guys to be real quiet, and we'll see if this bird can find my wife, Susan, not using the eyes, but using the ears on the count of three. One, two, three. Susan and Soren a hand. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Don't land in the alligator. Okay. Susan, you're a good catch. My wife used to play women's softball. Thank you, Susan. You can't what are you, are you slipping up, Susan? What? Yeah. Getting old. Getting old. I won't cut mention. Uh, 
I had an interesting phone call come in, I think three years ago, and uh, it was a refinery in Texas. They were tearing down a big building, a steel building. They went up in the lift, they went up where the I-beams were, and there were two eggs up with an I-beam. So they gave me a phone call, and so I drove over, and I've got great technology, I already showed you that, but I also have in my bag of tricks an egg heartbeat monitor. You guys have an egg heartbeat monitor? It's a good thing to have in the kitchen, you know, before you cook an egg, you make sure there's no leaf beating heart. Anyway, that would be crazy, you know, you crack up no, Anyway, so I put the two, I put the egg in one at a time, and I got a... <laughs> the graph went up and down very rapidly, and the heartbeat registered 242 beats per minute. I put the other one in, and I was like, wow, 268 beats per minute. That's a high heartbeat, and that tells me something, that they're gonna be hatching very soon. I get excited in there. So I brought him home, and I put him in an incubator, and sure enough, the next morning, click, 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 two little beaks came out of the eggs. And then they stopped. And I waited for 24 hours. And then I waited for another 24 hours, 48 hours, they should do some math, nothing happened. That's when we have to take charge because the heartbeat went down to 113 beats per minute. We're going to die soon. I've got to take action. I tell my wife to leave the room, but before you do, I say, bring me a scalpel and a pair of tweezers. And I spend three hours on each egg, carefully removing shells, avoiding blood vessels. I'm really good with these fingers. If you guys need brain surgery, come to me. Okay? And I remove not one, but both birds without breaking one blood vessel from their eggs, surgically. Both of them survived, and I brought them here to the show. Was that two years ago or three years ago? Two. I forget. Anyway, uh, they survived, and we raised them up and uh, released one to the wild, and that went great. And then we went to release the other one, and the other one was in love with me. Didn't want to leave me. Come on, get going, okay? <laughs> Or, you know, that, that happens sometimes. Uh, we try to do a release, and for one reason or the other, the bird prefers life in show business. <laughs> we, have a, we, just, and we just got another non-releasable hook. I wasn't the situation, but somebody raised a bald eagle that fell out of a nest. They cleaned it. And they released her once, and she came back. They released her again, she came back. They put her out a third time in a remote area. And they got a phone call that she was sitting on the road eating a roadkill and people were taking selfies with her. And uh, one guy got a little bit too close and the bird reared up and grabbed him by the stomach. <coughs> so they pried her, the bird off and they said, uh, this is the last time we're trying to miss. So they gave me that bald eagle. I think I'll bring it down next year, Chris. It's a huge female. I call her Betsy Ross, okay? No offense to Colin Kaepernick, if you know what I'm saying. Okay? <laughs> I like that laugh. Whoever that guy is, hire and shoot. I'm going to take him on the road. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, getting back to our friend, we still have him. Uh, uh, one of those great Mordowls. He's sitting right over here, and we call him the professor. Doesn't he look really like a professor, very, very wise? And owls aren't really that wise, I'll tell you what, their eyeballs take up most of the room in their skull. But we love the professor, and I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce you to probably the most successful raptor in America. Why do I say that? This bird can live in a variety of habitats. The bird can live in the Arctic, the desert, the prairie, the rainforest, the wetlands, the woodlands, the mountains, and the valleys. This bird can live on South Padre Island, it can live in the middle of Brownsville, it can live in the middle of New York City. But you know where a lot of them are moving now? Baltimore, Maryland. They heard there's a lot of rats there. <laughs> Nobody from Maryland here, hopefully. I'm safe. I had one person in Maryland like a couple months ago, but they thought it was funny. Okay? Anyway, that's what it is. Great Hornell, the amazing professor. 
and uh, you'll see these guys hanging out. So, I'm going to put you right over here. By the way, they're, there's another reason they're successful. They are the first species of bird that nests every year. They're first. So we got great horned owls in Texas right now sitting on eggs. You got great horned owls in Iowa right now sitting in the snow uh, on top of their eggs, getting ready to go. And uh, you know, they're they're pretty amazing. Now I'm going to take you guys from uh, Iowa to the South American rainforest. There we meet an exotic-looking bird with unusual markings around each of its eyes. It almost looks like my friend here is wearing a pair of glasses or what they used to call spectacles. This is a spectacled owl. This is Pepper. Hello, Pepper. You look so cute. And uh, let me tell you, my little friend here is not very big. The bird only weighs two pounds, but it has eyeballs uh, as large as yours, designed to gather light. And they do a great job of Pepper. You want to go back home? Okay. Shoo! Boomerang. Hard to get rid of these birds. They just keep on running to come home. Anyway, that's our friend Pepper. So owls have big eyes. One thing they can't do is they can't move their eyeballs. None of my birds can. Their eyes are in one place, fixed in the socket, held in place by a big bony ring. They have to compensate by rotating their, their head. We can turn our head from one shoulder all the way to the other shoulder. In our neck we have neck bones. They're called vertebrae. We have seven neck bones. All mammals do. Even a giraffe has seven neck bones. These guys have 14 neck bones, okay? So you can see this big owl is facing that way, but uh, this bird can twist his head 270 degrees to keep track of all the things that are going on out there uh, in the woods. <laughs> he does a lot of head twisting. That's why we call him Oliver. Oliver Twist, of course. What's up, Oliver? This is a male eagle owl, and I told you females are big. We have a female named Luna, a monster. I don't bring her to into tight rooms like this. <laughs> but hey, you and Oliver, nice to have you here. We had an interesting, this is a powerful bird. There's, there's YouTube videos of eagle owls taking down small deer. And uh, I was very proud of you last week. You know, I had a problem in my backyard up in North Padre, possums coming in all the time. I had a possum running along the fence last week. I'm like, Right? Because I don't want you coming in and killing one of my Aplomato balconies. So I set one of those traps in the backyard so I could relocate it. And uh, I went the next morning and I didn't catch the possum. What the heck did it happen? So I brought some friends over that afternoon and I walked into some of my bird pens to introduce them to uh, some of my birds. We walked into Oliver's pen and uh, there was Oliver and there was what was left of the possum. That possum crawled underneath into his pen, and the last thing that possum looked at were these two orange eyes. <laughs> sort of like the Roach Motel. You check in, but you don't check out. Okay? So he ate what he wanted to, and the rest went to a bald eagle named Betsy Ross. <laughs> she polished that thing off in no time. What's up, Oliver? Can I bring you out to introduce you to the crowd? There's not a lot of room in here. I do a great, great flying demonstration with Oliver, but. Uh, it's not going to work with this configuration that we have uh, right here, but I'm going to do a real small flying demo. Be real quiet. Don't stand up. She'll knock you over like a bowling pin. Now, when that bird flies, it doesn't make a sound. They have very soft feather edges, sort of like the stealth bombers of the, uh, the bird world. And speaking of flying, if you guys go to my, uh, my Facebook page, last year I had uh, some cool... No motion videos of that bird flying in this room. Yeah, I got some great, uh, really great in slow motion. So if you go to my Facebook page, Raptor Project, go back a year or look look all over the eye. I have all kinds of uh, slow motion stuff on there. Hey guys, I know what you're thinking right now. I know what you're thinking. We'd love to take these birds home with you. We've arranged for you to do that. Literally, okay? My wife Susan has a great book out called Raptor Basics. You'll find a lot of our birds in here. Also, some award-winning Nikon photography, and I'm responsible for that. And um, she also has another book out called, uh, let's see, Owls. <laughs> and so if you want to uh, grab something uh, after the show, everything here is tax included. We do take uh, credit cards. And if you guys want to take photographs of our birds, be my guest. You can use Flash, video, whatever you want to do, but listen carefully. Keep your camera, your smartphone about two feet away. 
we had an incident recently with uh, <coughs> a woman comes in, brand new iPhone, wants to get a close up, puts it a little bit too close to the owl, and <laughs> the owl grabs it with one foot. And then the bird takes the other foot. It looked like the bird was trying to text. <laughs> Susan and I, we heard a scraping sound, and then, believe it or not, we heard a crunching sound. That bird can break an iPhone. It's a very powerful predator. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> so take pictures, but if you guys want a photograph taken with one of our birds, we'll do that for you. Give us your smartphone, your cell phone, or your camera. Pick out any bird you want. Also, give us 10 bucks. You can do a whole bunch of pictures of yourself with that bird. Text them to your friends, put them on Facebook. And uh, again, our Facebook page is Raptor Project. You can check us out there. You know what we do? Uh, I got a couple. I got to head up to uh, where my next show is in, in Illinois. You're from Illinois? I say Illinois. You're from Illinois. I'm heading to Peoria soon. And I was wondering whether this show would play in Peoria. You know the old saying? If it plays in Peoria, it's going to play every. <laughs> so I'll be up in Peoria, and then I head to uh, St. Louis, Missouri. But our summer tour uh, is where we produce our biggest show. It's called Extreme, with an E, Raptors, Extreme Raptors. Go on YouTube or just Google Extreme Raptors and you'll see some cool videos of our Extreme Raptors show. I got a pretty cool job, don't I? <laughs> you know, I was interested in birds, I, gosh, since I was about eight years old. When I was 12 years old, walking along the beach, I found a baby falcon, 12 years old. I brought it home, learned how to train it, and I did my first show. I was 12 years old, 51 years ago. Back in those days, I never thought it was going to lead me to something like this. But I'll tell you something. Just like these kids that are sitting here today, guess where I grew up? In the greatest place on earth. And it's a place called America. It's where hopes and dreams actually do come true. As I travel this country, I'll tell you what, I never forget how blessed I am to live here. Because every morning I go to my office, I look over, I see that bird in front of that flag. And I'll tell you what, he still inspires me. Makes me real proud to be an American. Hope he does for you guys too. You guys are always a great audience. Very well behaved. I appreciate you all. And uh, there's some great stuff to do here at uh, this uh, birding center if, you, if you've just been confined to this room. We're going to let you loose. <laughs> it's like Wild Kingdom out there. So be careful with the alligators and some of the other stuff. But uh, I love this place. I call it the mansion. And I don't know if you know, Chris just left, but she was going to tell you she's preparing a special uh, residence so Susan and I can live here uh, when we retire. And, uh, did you know that, Susan? <laughs> Boy, my wildest dream. You guys are great, so thanks for coming. God bless you. God bless America. We'll see you down there.